take a little time machine backwards, shall okay. we, to the end of June after the NBA Finals had wrapped up. The Golden State Warriors had needed only five games to win their second title in three years. Mm -hmm. KD had already made it clear he was going to take less money so everyone could re-sign. And with the team's four, count them, four All-Stars, two of them MVPs, <laughs> mind you, all between the ages of 27 and 29, well, people were throwing around the word dynasty so much, I thought Joan Collins was going to have her own float on the Warriors parade. <laughs> Even our own Jeff Van Gundy said it was barely worth playing the next few years of basketball. You should just crown Golden State now. But a funny thing happened on the way to the coronation. Someone forgot to tell the rest of the NBA. Mm -hmm. The defiance started with Chris Paul. Remember, Chris was in line to get more than $200 million from the Clippers. He was comfortable in LA, the face of the franchise. His kids were in school here. I mean, if you really believe that the Western Conference is just Warriors chum, the smart move is to take the money, talk about loyalty a lot, mm. and just stay nice and cozy. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that, and the Rockets are now instead talking title. Then came Oklahoma City, also not conceding. Instead joining Russ, PG, and Mello. Quote from Paul George to USA Today, this feels like a championship team. Quote from Carmelo on why he waived his no trade. I wanted to compete for a championship, not conceding anything. And the Spurs, well, if you think that team's conceding, you haven't met Greg Popovich. And of course, there are the Cavaliers, who could have just thrown up their hands after Kyrie asked for his trade, but instead rebuilt to create, really, the deepest team since LeBron has come back to Cleveland. I mean, look. We should have known this is how these guys would react to all of the rest of us telling them just not to bother against the sure thing. Do you know what the odds are of playing in the NBA? Mm. If you're a high school basketball player, your odds of making it to the league, 0.03%. Wow. That's like being struck by lightning. Not metaphorically. Those odds are actually <laughs> about the same as the odds of being struck by lightning. Mm. And yet every single pro player you see out on that court has beaten those odds. So yeah, the task of beating the Warriors is daunting. But apparently, there are a lot of folks in the NBA who don't take the odds being stacked against them very seriously. I don't know if in the end that's going to prove foolhardy or prophetic. But I do know it's going to be a ball to watch. Yes, it is. I mean, Stephen, we sat here in the after June and said, mm -hmm. oh no, Warriors, wow, they look good. But you look at the way all these teams have reloaded against them, no one is sitting back and waiting. Nobody, they did a great, NBA did a great job. All these teams did a great job of being able to get, get ready to compete with this, with this Golden State Warriors team. Nobody's laying down, that's what they show. Golden State is still the best team to me, but you got OKC now, you got Minnesota, you got so many teams that didn't added top players. The Spurs are still great with the great coach, great right, so who's your, we've got, just in the last four days, mm -hmm. you've had Oklahoma City double down and mm -hmm. the Cavs double down, right? Right. So who is your biggest threat to the Warriors right now? Well, I'm going to give you my threat in both conferences. Okay. Of course, Cleveland is mm -hmm. the biggest threat. And I really think OKC is a threat to go to state because mm -hmm. you have three dominant guys that want to win and that uh, know how to compete. I love it. I wonder how many of today's NBA fans got your dynasty reference there, by the you way. You know what? <laughs> right. <laughs> Some of our staff members had to be explained. But the CW is doing a reboot of Dynasty. Oh, I did so, not know that. I mean, come on. That? It should be hip with the kids. Uh, um, I do think, look, I. I I got to credit Daryl Morey, first of all, for being yeah. kind of the first one to kind of jump in yeah. and say, you know what, we're not going to sit there and concede the title to the Warriors and then Chris Paul, for, like you mentioned, for going there. Um, I think Houston's probably the top threat to Golden State, more so because it's the one unanswerable question, like, can they have a mega offense that's impossible to stop, especially when you consider, like, yes, Mike D'Antoni had Steve Nash, who was an all-star player turned MVP. He turned James Harden into a point guard that can do that. Now, right. what is Chris Paul going to do in that system? I mean, he's already MVP caliber. He's been sure. his second one year. How is he going to elevate that team and that offense? So maybe there's a question if they can outscore or score with the Warriors, and they'll be a threat. Outside of that, I'd probably put it even, like, between Cleveland, uh, Boston, and even a team like Minnesota, who can surprise mm -hmm. people with Carl yeah. Anthony Towns, if he plays at an MVP level, or if Jimmy Butler and Andrew Wiggins really sort of uh, defend well and set the tone there. I think they can be threats, and I think what we learned more than anything from two seasons ago was that it just takes one little glitch in that Warriors, you know, right. campaign. Steph slipping, one, and then... him slipping, or in this case, it could be KD getting hurt at a different time of right. year than he did last and year. And then with these teams, you know, playoffs is about who's best in that series. Right. You got a lot of teams that's dominant that can be better okay, in the series. Okay, so, so I want to ask you about yeah, the team dangerous. you won the ring with. Mm -hmm. And look, 
popping the Spurs and Kawhi Leonard until Kawhi got hurt in that first game mm -hmm. in the Western Conference Finals, I mean, they were the only team to really seem to threaten them. Right. And you look at the odds makers who they think the Western Conference team that still has the best odds right now to mm -hmm. win the title besides after the Warriors is the Spurs. Right. Why do you think that they are still a favorite in so many people's eyes? Consistency. Over the years, you know what you're going to get from the Spurs. One thing about it, it's a lot of teams in the NBA, but how many you know that's going to keep their composure all game? How many you know they're a great coach? They don't have a super team like um, everyone else now. They have but, Kawhi and company. But a great coach and takes over there sometimes because you know they're going to be solid on both ends of the floor. You, when you look at teams, you look at the players, but when you look at the Spurs, you definitely respect uh, Greg Popovich. Kawhi is approaching LeBron levels. LeBron can elevate a team to a finals almost right. by himself. Kawhi, with that coaching staff mm -hmm. and with those players, can probably always get there. So we went from, oh, I don't know, this is going to be so boring, to, oh, my God, there's so many, th <laughs> so many threats to them. We don't know who it's going to be, which is why we love the NBA.